Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. I'm packing up my bag as well as one of the dog's bags. I'd like to go on a trip this week, but the weather has been really just funky, so I don't know, we will see. And I thought I would show you the gear that the dogs take backpacking with them. Similar to what I did with the what dog food my dogs eat. If you want more information about the things I share here today, please go over to that post. I'm also going to have two free downloadable resources that I put together. One is a dog gear checklist, and it has the items I talk about here today on it, as well as links to where you can find some of them online. And there's also going to be like a how to step by step that you can download for a DIY item I'm going to share here. So let's go ahead and get into the gear that the dogs take backpacking. First and foremost is their pack. I won't go into too much detail about just all of the features because I did do a review of this pack about a year or more ago. I actually love this pack so much that I bought it three times. So the first time for Nora, the purple pack, the second one when Barrett needed a pack, and I've actually bought the blue one in extra large because so pretty, Nora, Nora just grew out of her purple Very one. Nice color so that's kind of a testament to how much I love this pack and how well it meets what my dogs need, that when Nora outgrew her purple pack, I went ahead and purchased it again in the larger size for her so she could continue to use it. And, um, I guess the brand is Brother Cat Dog. That's what it says on this. I was definitely skeptical about buying a pack for my dog off AliExpress, but as soon as I started taking the dogs out with this, it just proved to be not only a durable piece of gear, but also very functional. It met all of the needs that my dog had and had all of the features that I wanted in a pack for the dogs, like removable saddlebags. And their saddlebags have just incredible capacity. This extra large has 16 liter saddlebags. The size large, the purple one that Nora typically wears, that one has 12 liter saddlebags. And a neat thing that I like about the two packs is that even though the harness is a larger size and the saddlebags are, a larger capacity, I can swap them out. So back when Nora still fit in the purple harness, if I was going on a longer trip and needed larger capacity saddlebags, I could unclip these little orange ones off of Barrett's pack and put it on hers and vice versa. In terms of just durability, the dogs have no concept of being gentle on their gear. So this tiny bit of wear and tear and some fraying threads like that is the extent of the damage and every piece of gear that they take fits so perfectly in the saddle bags so this is the pack that they use i've been very satisfied with it and like i said so much so that when nora outgrew her old one i went ahead and purchased it again in the size that would now fit her so now let's talk about their bed so i tried the I guess you'd call commercial made doggy pads and dog beds out there. For a while, I was giving the Roughwear Highland pad a try. It wasn't necessarily too heavy. It was only about a pound, but it was just so bulky. So that really did not work for me. I ended up returning it. Went through a couple other products that were similar and still just, it was either too heavy or too bulky. And I finally settled on making my own. So this is that DIY item I made too, and I'll show you the other one in a second. And it is a pretty decent size. It's made out of a car sunshield, and it looks like this is bubble wrap. It is actually not. It's corrugated cardboard inside. And I said I made two mostly because I wanted to compare the different materials and see what lasted longer. This one has uh, just styrofoam on the inside and it's the same size. So far, I really like the corrugated cardboard one better 
because it holds up to damage a lot better. I like that it has this sort of mylar coating on it that helps reflect heat. I've seen other backpackers make some pretty freaking cool stuff, just like gear accessories out of this material. And so it was kind of a perfect fit for what I was looking for for my dogs. Another thing with this bed is uh, I don't let them sleep on it by itself. I have a cover for it, which is nothing fancy or special. It is literally just like a microfiber pillowcase. And so I will put the pad inside this pillowcase and that kind of protects it from the dogs. Next up is their jacket. And I'm sure you've seen the dogs running around in their little matching pink and blue jackets in the trip videos. I got this from PetSmart on clearance. It is the Top Paw 3-in-1 jacket, and this has been so perfect for a variety of scenarios on the trail. It acts as a rain jacket, a windbreaker, and it also has this nice little fleece insert that you can just snap right into the jacket. And I know some people will tell me that having a jacket for the type of dog that I have is overkill, but this is one of those things that I would rather have and not use than really need if we're in pretty cold weather, pretty stormy weather, and then I don't have it and the dog really could have used it. On top of all that, this jacket has worked really well for my dogs as a substitute for a blanket or sleeping bag. I've seen some people have like a whole sleeping bag for their dog and so mine just sleep on the little pad I made them with the cover, the pillowcase, and their jacket. Depending on how cold it is, sometimes it'll be just the fleece, just the shell, or both together and just the versatility of it is fantastic for just so many different situations and it has saved a ton of weight in their packs as well as bulk. It just really, that system works for me and works for the dogs really well. When it comes to food for a typical three day, two night backpacking trip, I'll pack two dinners, two breakfasts, two lunches, and I try to distribute the weight evenly between the two saddlebags I'm not going into all of the different foods they eat here today because we've already done that in a separate video and blog post, but I will put one dinner in each side, one breakfast in each side, and then in these front flaps, I'll put their snacks and whatever I'm packing for lunch. Like if I've got one of these little meal packets, put that in the front pocket. And like I said, try and make sure there's an even load on each side uh, of the saddlebags. For a bowl, I just used this silicone collapsible bowl and I was using a much larger size bowl that folded in half and zipped around itself, but after some use that protective coating wore off and so if I poured water into it, it was a matter of minutes before that water would like seep right through same thing with food, that was kind of a gross mess. So I decided to just go with the cheap, simple, collapsible silicone bowl. And I know this looks like a very small size, but the dogs don't mind it. In fact, they think that they're getting treated special when I have their bag of food and I refill it like three or four times at dinner until it's all gone. They think they're getting like four helpings of dinner. So. It works out fine for us and it's small enough that I can clip it onto their harness or onto their saddlebags and then when we're taking a snack break, water break, whatever, it's right there at hand. I just unclip it and then give it to the dogs. So I really liked using this way more than one of those fold up, zip up fabric bowls. A pretty popular recommendation when it comes to gear for your dogs is to invest in a pair of boots for them. And that's just something that my dogs don't use for us, where we hike, the times of year we hike, just for my dogs, it did not seem necessary. And so they don't use boots, plain and simple. But I take very good care of their paws at home and on the trail. I use Musher's Secret and you can see this one is practically empty. I need to go ahead and order a new one. 
but so I apply this paw wax to their paws pretty regularly. I don't have like a set regimen like every single Tuesday at 3 p.m. Just whenever I notice that their paws could use a little extra care from week to week, I will apply this. And I like to save my empty chapstick tubes and melt some of it into the chapstick tubes so that I have a portable version, a travel size amount of it for when we are on trips. But I really love this stuff. It's all natural waxes. And sometimes I even use it for myself if I realize I've left my chapstick at home and it's a really cold, windy trip then I will dip into this and use some of it. And like I said, it's doggy friendly, people friendly, sort of a do it all. It's one of those must have items for me that has come in handy so many times. I can't imagine hiking without it. Next up we have waste bags. And I know there's probably a huge debate to be had about whether or not you carry your dog's poop for the entire trip or if you bury it. Now, if there is no rule explicitly saying that I am not allowed to do that, I will opt for burying their poop. That's just, that's what I will do. And you can think I'm a terrible person, hate me, that's fine, whatever. But I have these on hand just in case we are somewhere where that is not an option or there's a rule that explicitly says you cannot do that. So I'm prepared, but usually, like I said, I will bury their poop. And when we get to shared gear in a minute, uh, the trowel is in their pack on hand so that when I need to get to it, I can. This is probably the, the most important first aid and toiletry item in the dog's pack. These are chewable Pepto-Bismol tablets. And if you don't already know, German Shepherds have very sensitive stomachs, very unpredictable sensitive stomachs. And so these little things have just, they've saved the day countless times. Barrett and Nora will be doing fine, having a great day. And then for some reason, their belly will just act up in the most inconvenient times. And so having this just, like I said, has saved the day. I give them a couple of these and then it helps settle their stomach and help us continue on with our day hike or with our backpacking trip, whatever it is. So along with Musher's Secret, I would never hike or backpack without having these little tablets on hand. Next, I'd like to show you a couple just miscellaneous items. So I have a tie-out cable for the dogs when we're at camp. On the trail, I use just a retractable leash and I will clip that to my hip belt and take and give whatever slack they need as they're walking beside or ahead of me. And so when we are at camp, I hook them up to this cable lead. It is a thin cable. This is about 25 feet. I just picked it up at Walmart and this has worked fine for my large size dogs. They are not aggressive pullers when it comes to being on a lead or being on a leash. So that definitely has something to do with it. It just helps me to keep them from wandering, keep them within the camp boundary. I typically do not take toys on the trail for the dogs. They're pretty content entertaining themselves, making their own fun by chewing on burnt logs or sticks at camp. So I've found that just taking toys is an extra thing to carry along that oftentimes they won't pay any attention to. I will say though, Nora does love her tennis ball wherever we are. So I have started taking the Chuck It Ultra Ball this is just made of solid material. Nora has yet to be able to chew through one of these and she's a really aggressive chewer when it comes to her toys. So this is perfect. I'll just put that in her pack and when we're at camp, I'll give it to her. She can chew to her heart's content without making a mess. Last but not least is shared gear. So this is just a handful of items that I will put in their saddlebags to take a couple ounces off my own pack and I will probably use throughout the day or need to get to at some point. So the first one I mentioned earlier is the trowel. I will put this just at the top of their saddlebags so it's easy to get to when I need it. Another item that is pretty necessary throughout the day is my water filter and Cnoc Canoc bladder. 
And this really only stays in their pack for the first two or three miles of the trip, just until I need to get to it to filter water, refill my water bottle, whatever. Another item is the bear bag hanging kit. So just that line with the carabiners in a stuff sack, I'll put that into their bag. And the last item is my fuel canister. So if there's room in their pack, it's not too heavy, I will put the fuel canister in there. And that's just for the purpose of taking a couple ounces off of my pack and having them help out a little. Now I'm sure a question you've had the entire video is how much does their pack typically weigh? So usually it's between four and seven pounds. And obviously a longer trip means more food, so heavier weight and closer to that seven pound mark. But for just an overnight, it's usually like four pounds. Those three day trips, typically between five and six. Usually that's what it weighs. It normally does not go over seven pounds. So let's go ahead and load up this pack and then hang it on the pack scale and see just what the final weight is. moment of truth for a three-day two-night backpacking trip it ends up coming to 5.7 pounds Tracing my footsteps through the wind. Back to a place where I could begin Maybe you just don't go hiking. No, that's not an option.